enantiomers rotate plane polarized light by the same magnitude, but in opposite directions. This is one of the enantiomers of carbone. It rotates plane polarized light anticlockwise or to the left, if you like. This is given the descriptor minus and is described as labor rotatory or L. Note it's a small L. The mirror image of this enantiomer represents the opposite enantiomer. This form of carbon rotates plane polarized light to the same magnitude as the minus carbon, but in the opposite direction, so clockwise, or to the right. This is given the descriptor plus and is described as dextrorotatory, represented by a small d. Another way to show this plus carbon is to rotate it by 180 degrees. In this position, we can see that the two enantiomers have almost all the atoms in the same location, except for two substituents attached to the stereogenic center. These two include hydrogens that are not depicted here. As the enantiomers rotate the light the same amount in opposite directions, if there are equal amounts of both enantiomers, that's to say a racemate, their ability to rotate light cancels each other out to give zero rotation. Any rotation can be described as alpha. For reproducibility, we need to determine other parameters. These include temperature, commonly at 298 degrees Kelvin, so standard room temperature, and wavelength of 589 nanometers associated with sodium, called the sodium D-line, abbreviated to capital D. It is calculated by the observed rotation divided by the path length of the light through the sample solution multiplied by the concentration of the sample solution. Note the path length is measured in decimeters, where one decimeter equals 10 centimeters. This can be abbreviated as alpha over LC. Enantiomeric excess, or EE as a percentage, is a way to indicate the amount of one enantiomer relative to the other. One method is to measure the sample's observed alpha divided by the alpha max or alpha value associated with a pure single enantiomer thought to dominate in the sample. This is all multiplied by 100. The problem here is that the alpha max has to be known and is often found in the literature. Another way to express enantiomeric excess is the percentage of the major enantiomer minus the percentage of the minor enantiomer divided by the percentage of the major enantiomer plus percentage of the minor enantiomer all multiplied by 100. 